Davis again trying to send it in front, broken up. Here's Gretzky left side. Gretzky to Sandstrom, goes behind the net. Wrap around, saved by Young, right at the goal line. I am a, a very lucky person in the hockey world. I, I seem to fall into a really good situation all the time and, and be on great teams. And it went for junior, it went for, you know, in the American League, I happened to fall into a, a great team in, in Hershey. And then to be traded after that, that, that run we had in Hershey and then to go into, uh, get a chance to go in Pittsburgh. And, and then all of a sudden the pieces started going together. Uh, you know, I know they had a good base with Mario Lemieux and some other players, but uh, when you start adding these players uh, to, the, to the mix, uh, things started to turn around and the franchise took off. And again, I rode the, the backs of a lot of players and I was fortunate enough to be a part of the team. You know, we had uh, some great players uh, playing there and it just went on and on. And, uh, you know, the year that we won the Stanley Cup, the 90, 91 year, we weren't so sure, you know, we were even going to make the playoffs. And we know we were better. And was, as time got on, we started getting better and better as the season. And again, it's a team that came together off ice before we got together uh, on ice type thing. And, um, and then all of a sudden things started to click for us. And uh, it was a unique season. Again, just everything seemed to come together as most championships have. In 90, so we won the first championship in 91. That was, um, we had, uh, I was pregnant with Matthew, we had Gabrielle, I was pregnant with Matthew during that season. Um, so we had made a lot of, you know, we had moved from Hershey to Pittsburgh, Wendell had stuck in the NHL, it was very exciting um, to really stick with the team um, and be a bona fide NHL hockey player. I mean, there's the ultimate dream coming true, you know. Here. Come on, you can say a lot. What about winning the cup, Yara Martel? The Stanley Cup is yours. Yeah, it's mine. Tell America beautiful. Tell yeah, I love, I love Tell America. America. I love America. A childhood dream of being on a Stanley Cup winner, being near the Stanley Cup, drinking out of the Stanley Cup, and it was just, uh, it was, it was again, it was almost surreal, especially with that, uh, uh, you know, being around the Stanley Cup. Do you remember who handed? I have no idea. I don't remember that part. I don't. I just remember picking it up, and you know, and it's a faint memory because, because again, you're caught in euphoria, and you, it's it's like, it's like walking into a candy store. You don't know where to go and what to do and what candy you want, and what to do, and uh, you know, and that's what happens all the time because you just, you're just looking around to hug each other, and it's just, it's just, it's mayhem, and you know, and I, I said this about championships, and I. Um, it's almost like you want to remove yourself sometime and, and sit up in the stands and see everything that's happening because at ice level you don't see everything that's happening and, it's, and that's what's nice sometimes you can go back now and watch from a different perspective you know it's like going to a concert if you're up close you can see the same concert from way back and it's two different perspectives and that's what happens with with championships like when you're in the middle of it you're you're stuck in this little bubble and it's whatever's in front of you is what you see so and, and again it goes by so fast and you're just you're, you're out of your mind sometimes just uh, going on with the with the you know with the celebration. Uh, the armor yager. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis <laughs> have just left the building. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, after um, I can't I actually don't remember if it was the first or the second championship. Now there was um, we had a, a a big party one night. Um, the team had taken us out on a riverboat cruise, a big dinner. We were all dressed up. It was very lovely. Um, Mario decided to have everybody back to his home afterwards to kind of keep the party going. Um, I mean, I think it was literally the night after we won the championship, so everybody was really in a, a fun mood. Um, so we had gone to Mario's house, and he had a beautiful pool in his backyard, and, and everybody was there, and uh, somebody ended up getting thrown in to the pool. And then the next thing you knew, everybody was getting thrown into the pool. Nobody was jumping in, but everybody was getting thrown in. I had this beautiful dress, and I didn't want it to get ruined. And and I remember, and I didn't want to get thrown in the water. And um, the girls decided they were going to hide, so everybody was hiding throughout the house. So I was about the last one found. I was hiding in Mario's closet in his suits on the floor, like all the suits were in front of me. And uh, one of the players. Actually, it was Pete Taglianetti, I still remember it. He managed to find me and picked me up, carried me down the staircase, a big sort of swooping, winding staircase, and took me out to the pool and didn't just drop me in. I mean, literally threw me in the water. And, you know, that's how it, how it went. And it was fine. It was fun. 
And you always hear the story, everyone talks about it, how you grow up as a, as a kid and you play ball hockey and you, whenever you're out and you dream about winning the Stanley Cup and um, they're almost mythical gods that win the Stanley Cup and then all of a sudden, hey, you're looking around the dressing room going, these guys are, these guys are goofs like me, you know, and they're I'm on the same ice. And, and sometimes you almost got to catch yourself because you're almost in awe of where you're at and you're almost giddy sometimes because you're going, oh, I'm in the NHL, really? This isn't, this isn't supposed to happen. And, and, this, is, and this is what uh, goes on sometimes. And I know players do it all the time to this day. A bunch of them won't admit it, but I know I, I, what I was like. And then all of a sudden I'm going, hey, these guys, you know, they're like me. You know, a lot of them have a lot more skill than me, but I'm still in the same dressing room with them. And, and that's the way I always describe my career. I, I might have had a little more skill than the average person, um, but I worked hard to, to stay where I was and to succeed. And uh, you know, I know a lot of goalies. When I was in the NHL, I know there was a lot of goalies in the American Hockey League that were better skilled than me, but I, I wouldn't give them the chance to, to take my job either through you know being a good team guy or working hard or whatever. And then again, that's what I think sustained my career. You know, especially in Pittsburgh was uh, was my dedication to to be in there because because uh, when you start looking around the dressing room with the skill that was there, it was uh, that skill was a lot better than what I had. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by Attorney General Thornburg. Standing next to me is a Pennsylvanian of note, our Attorney General, and uh, he and I are very excited and somewhat, I am at least, apologetic for keeping this group of uh, athletes waiting. I want them to be, uh, I don't want to get them, uh, get them uh, up in arms like I've seen them from time to time out on the ice. When we won it, you know, when we were 19, when you're winning the major junior championship, I mean, that's the pinnacle of success at that point in your life when you're a teenager. That's that, at that point, that was as high as you could get. That was very exciting. So as you, you know, obviously as you grow older and you get a different perspective on things, well, now you've reached the pinnacle of success in your job. I mean, you can't do any anything more than what you've done. It's very gratifying. You feel very fortunate and very lucky to have been able to be on a team that had the right group of guys, you know, to gel together and win a championship. And a great group of girls, because I'm always a big supporter of, of the wives and girlfriends, because you do do a lot, you know, to help your guys out. You know, you try to do what you can. I've always kind of felt that the girls, they're a piece to the puzzle too. Actually, it's the ring I wear the most, because uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, it probably has the most significance. Um, on top, it has the big penguin uh, logo uh, with my name and number, actually, which I was number one. We became number one at that time with the Stanley Cup. Uh, it has uh, our record on the inside inscribed, uh, what we beat each team by the series. And actually, I've worth so much, I think it's fading out. I can't even read it now. Um, and on top, there's actually, it's kind of unique. Uh, uh, it takes 16 wins to win the Stanley Cup. So there's one big diamond uh, represent the first Stanley Cup of Pittsburgh, and then there's 16 small diamonds and represents uh, each win that it took to win the Stanley Cup. So it's kind of a, a unique thing that uh, that uh, the way they did that. We didn't really think about it. So it's it's a nice ring where it's not too big, and I can wear it pretty well all the time. And 1991 belongs to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And it's kind of scary when you think about it. The Penguins are just four months away from starting the regular season once again.